Hello, everybody. I'm Kenneth Copeland. This is the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast, and I'm going to tell you something. Jesus is going to do something tonight you're going to like. So, <laughs> I mean, come on. Let's have a word of prayer, and we'll get right into today's Bible lesson. Father, we thank you, and we praise you, and we worship you for the Word of the living God, for insight, ideas, and concepts of the life of faith that come from heaven. We open our hearts, we open our minds for revelation from heaven, words filled with faith and power that move heaven on the earth. We thank you for it, and we ascribe all of the glory to the wonderful name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Amen. Glory to God. Now then, I want to welcome all of you for coming tonight. Thank you for coming. You are helping us tonight. Uh, let me try this side. You are helping us tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. We began talking in this series about the will of God to heal. And we have followed Jesus. We followed him home. <laughs> Capernaum, which is? Oh. Amen. And um, that the headquarters, the home and headquarters of Jesus was in the city of Capernaum. And so many times in so many places, uh, in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we see him either leaving home to go someplace or coming home, ministering in his, in his own house. And we followed him, we literally followed him uh, when he left his place and went across the lake to the area of the Gadarenes. And we were right there with him when he delivered the madman who became the compassion preacher of the Decapolis. Praise God. Isn't that wonderful? And, and it was so important to, to watch him heal and deliver that man that quick. Glory to God. And I want you to know he can set you free tonight just that quick to praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now, and then, we, and then we followed him. He went back across the lake to home, Capernaum, and Jairus was waiting for him. Of course, Jairus was the leader of the synagogue there, so he and Jesus um, obviously knew one another quite well, and he told Jesus what was going on at home. But we listened to Jairus declare his faith. Glory to God. You come lay your hands on her, my daughter, and she will live. Amen. And we followed him all the way to Jairus' house. And on the way, the, the woman with the issue of blood touched the hem of his garment. For she said, if I but touch his clothes, I shall be made whole. And what did Jesus say? Daughter, thy faith has made you whole. Praise God. Faith. Oh, my. The spiritual creative force of God. Faith, hallelujah. Mm, mm, mm. Then on to Jairus' house, where there he raised Jairus' daughter from the dead and left Jairus' house. And we knew and I were there. I mean, we followed him, didn't we? And left Jairus' house and, and went to his own house, which was either just next door or right close there. And uh, and then two blind men followed him home. It says, when he went into the house, then they followed. They just came right on in. Well, that's the way it was around Jesus' house, you know. And, and of course, he healed them. Then he said, be it done unto you according to your faith. <laughs> the way you have believed. I mean, that's the way it's going to happen. Well, and then we, we watched and we were there. When people came in, doctors of the law, 
And, and the, I mean, just the finest donkeys in the land were parked right out there in front of Jesus' house, man. And he's teaching the Word, and he's preaching the Word, and the power was there to heal them, and all of a sudden, somebody starts tearing a hole in Jesus' roof. And he's standing there and said, Son, be of good cheer, boy. Your sins are forgiven you. Well, and of course, it, it, it threw kind of a a curve at the religious guys there, and they got sidetracked a little bit and said, uh, oh, no, 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 wait a minute. Can he do this? And then Jesus said, which is easier to say? Thy sins be forgiven thee. Arise, take up your bed and walk. To prove that the Son of Man hath power on the earth to forgive sin, he said to the man, take up your bed and go home. Isn't that good? So the same power that heals is the same power that forgives. And the same power that forgives is the same power that heals. Hallelujah. Now we need to, we, we need to take hold of that and learn that in our own lives. Because if you're unwilling to forgive, you're blocking your healing. See, if, 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 you're, if, if you're balking at forgiving, you're, you're, you're putting pressure against your healing. But when you become a forgiver, you're open to healing. Isn't that good? Well, somebody ought to shout amen about that. I mean, hey, come on. Hallelujah. Let me say this about forgiveness too. Jesus said... And then we're going to talk about this more as we go this week. Forgive if you have ought against any. That's an order. This is the Lord Advocate General of the church. He just said, forgive if you have ought against any. Forgiveness is not a feeling. Forgiveness is obedience. Well, I just can't forgive them. No, that's not true. Are you a human being? Then you can forgive. Well, where do you get that, Brother Copeland? If you're a human being, you have the power of decision. Forgiveness is a decision. It's a decision to obey God. It's a decision to obey your Savior. He said, if you have ought against any, forgive. Sir, yes, sir, they're forgiven right now. You mean that's all there is to it? No, that's the beginning of what there is to it. <laughs> because Sunday's coming. And she's going to be there. And he's going to be there. And when you see him, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> That's your flesh. And then you say, oh no, I thought I forgave him. Well, did you or did you not? Well, yes, I did. Your flesh is in the habit of not forgiving them. So now you are going to have to take authority over your flesh and tell it they are forgiven. Amen. So body, you just get in line. Mind, you just get in line. And you put a big smile on your face. It's so nice to see you. <laughs> you remember what Brother Moore taught about that? Next th this coming Thanksgiving, you're going to get the chance. You know, when all of you get together. And the Trumpites are sitting over here and the... <laughs> oh, here we go. Oh, yeah, first thing you want to do when you get there, it's so nice to see you. Oh, I'm so glad and glory to God. And they're saying that, 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 that religious idiot is here again. Yes, the religious idiot loves you too. Because it's impossible to insult me. I am not touchy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes, amen. 
Well, we were there. We watched Jesus and, and watched him heal and deliver. Not one time, not once, not even any inkling of no. Not, not, not the slightest bit of, well, I don't know. Perfect record of healing, deliverance of anybody that would allow him to. Some of them didn't. He didn't heal everybody. There were those that wouldn't allow it. And there in his own hometown, he could do no mighty works because of their unbelief and because of the fact they dishonored him. So what did he do? He went around teaching in all of their villages. Teaching, teaching, teaching. That's the answer to unbelief. Because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So now then, let's talk about tonight the receiving of the healing process. Healing is a process. All healing is of God. Amen? Amen. God is the one that put healing in the human body. Now, someone comes along and says, I don't believe in healing. Yeah, you do. You really do. Well, you do something to your, your, your skin or something, you expect it to heal up because you know healing's in there. Now, let me just give you a, just a small for instance. Um, uh, well, we say a, a broken bone. Healing naturally what, four to six weeks? I've never had a broken bone, but it's something like that, right? Four to six weeks? Or say four to six seconds. Same process, though. The bone went through exactly the same process. The anointing just caused it to speed up. Hallelujah! See, that anointing will work at the speed of light if you'll turn it loose for what it's full, fully capable of doing there. Amen. I, I'm, I sense that'll help somebody. See, divine healing is not some strange thing because divine built this body. <laughs> Amen. He's the one that put healing in it in the first place. And so it's the same process. So now how do you receive that process? It is very detailed, laid out in the Word. Let's start with the ch Proverbs chapter 4, if you'll turn there with me. Let's look at this very carefully. And I want you to notice how always the Word of God is in play. What, when, why do we call this God's Word? Why, why, why would you call that God's Word? Now, you know, I have, I have a handful of books that I've written. Actually, that's not my Word. Now, His Word is his bond. These are two covenants, one sworn in the blood of animals, the second sworn in the blood of Jesus. Now, can you see that? That's the reason this is God's Word. Man, that just did something to me. I, and I, I, I know it did something to somebody online. Somebody cook, took hold of that and said, oh, he really means this. Yes. You mean you take it literally? I take it deeper than that. I've staked my life on this book. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now then, Proverbs 4, are you there? Verse 20, my son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them, let my words, my sayings, not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart, in your spirit. For they, my words, are life. Jesus said in John um, 16, or John 6, 63, excuse me, my words, he said, the flesh profits nothing. My words are spirit and they are life. Now, Jesus also said, Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. You have the spiritual capacity to hear, receive every word that God has said or ever will say. Why? You're a spirit being like him. And spirit being needs spirit food. Faith is a spirit force. Healing is a spirit force coming out of your spirit into your flesh and into your mind. So now look at it again. Attend to my words. Now what does that mean? That means put this word first. Put priority on the word of God. Incline. Incline means to lean. So be leaning toward the Word, not away from it. Well, I know the Bible said that, but you just don't understand. No, no. Lean over this way. I know the Bible said that. That must be true. So I'm receiving that. I don't care what it, I don't care what it does to me. I don't care what I have to change. I don't alter the Word to fit my lifestyle. I alter my lifestyle to fit this book. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Didn't take me long to get happy. Praise God. <laughs> Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from your eyes. Now, why is it so important to keep these healing scriptures, keep the prosperity scriptures, keep, keep these scriptures, whatever it is that, that is the answer to your situation. You find it in the Word of God. Find the answer to the prayer before you pray it. Pray, pray God's Word back to Him. He said it, now do it. Amen. That makes prayer really easy. If my words abide in you, you abide in me, my words abide in you, ask what you will, and it will be done unto you. Can you see that? So what you say, start with the Word first. Keep it in your eyes. Keep looking at that. Stop, stop looking at the, the bad stuff. St keep looking at those scriptures. Keep looking at that Word. Keep it coming in your eyes. You need to be seeing yourself with it, not without it. Amen. Amen. Take the time, particularly if there's a situation that's been in your life a long time. Take the time to see yourself without it. Take the time. I'm telling you, set, set some time aside where you just meditate on that word. Now that I see by his stripes, I was healed. Now, how does that change this situation? Glory to God. Well, I, I've been, yeah, I can see that. I can see that. I've been not doing this because I was afraid it's going to hurt this. 
okay, I see myself doing that. Now, it'll take some time and pray over it before you do it. So, Lord, help me with my imagination. God gave you that imagination. Don't be afraid of it. But you take, you take very, care, pay very careful attention what you put in there because it is a powerful thing, your imagination. Glory to God. Now then, keep them in the midst of your heart. They, these words, are life unto those that find them. Just uh, the casual reader doesn't find them, but the one that meditates on them, the one that feeds on them, feeding your spirit, taking time to do that, putting that first place, and you meditate on it. I've, I've had times that you just go a long period of time going and doing these, these very same things, and one morning, whoa, yeah, that's it. Nothing changed but you. <laughs> what happened? Faith came. Faith came. Gloria calls it, that's when faith boils over. And notice this, life to those that find them and health, the cross reference says medicine. That word translated health is the Hebrew word medicine. The Word of God, the, the Word meditating on the Word, inclining your ear unto the Word, keeping it in your eyes and in your ears, keeping it in the midst of your heart, finding them is medicine to your flesh. And you cannot overdose on it. Amen. In fact, just lock in on it and double the dose. And then triple the dose. Praise God. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord praise and thanksgiving. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. We hope you enjoyed today's teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And remember, Jesus is Lord.